Sup, Liron here, and today we're looking at PWC Cadmium Red Deep. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another vid. And today we're looking at PWC Shinhan uh, Cadmium Red Deep. I bought this originally together with two other uh, paint tubes, the Cobalt Blue and the Cadmium Yellow Deep. Now, some of you may know I love uh, warm reds and, and warm yellows. Are, these are among my favorite colors. And so this one became an instant favorite of mine, um, even more uh, than some of the other warm reds that I loved so far. And I'm really happy to, to have discovered uh, PWC and Shinhan because they're really uh, readily available here in Israel. So I'm happy about that. And they have a lot of paints that, uh, that I can try out. And I do plan on trying out a lot of them. Um, so anyway, uh, as I showed you, I put these here uh, in this palette, and this one is the Cadmium Red Deep. Uh, so what I want to do now is go over some of the paint stats. I actually don't have that much um, interesting or unique information about it. The Shinhan doesn't have uh, descriptions for each of their paints, and so there's nothing too interesting to read. Uh, but uh, this is this looks just like a great color. Um, I will mention that it's not transparent. It's like semi-opaque. Uh, and so if you're looking for transparency, it's probably not what you're looking for. It also seems like it's somewhat uh, staining from the experimentation I did here. And I'm going to show you uh, in just a moment and we'll probably test it out during the demo stage. Okay. Uh, so because there isn't too much fascinating information necessarily, I'll probably add a quick, quick painting demo uh, to the end of this. Okay. Just to make things a little more interesting. So anyway, let's get started with this paint's stats. Okay. So in terms of this paint and it's um, information. So we've got pigment PR108. By the way, I'm using a bolder Sharpie marker. I hope it's more visible now, uh, better than the pen for sure. So PR108 is very common for cadmium reds. Uh, so nothing too special here. The series is D, so this is a relatively expensive PWC paint. Um, all of the paints that I bought together with this one were considered expensive. The Cadmium Yellow Deep and the Cobalt Blue, they were all Series D. Um, the most expensive I saw they have is E, uh, and so this one is <laughs> at the top somewhere there. Um, Light Fastness, 3 out of 3 stars, that's the best on their uh, scale. Uh, it is semi-opaque. Uh, and it seems to be uh, somewhat staining now. The reason is that after experimenting with it, can you see this red area? This didn't happen because of the SAA uh, Alizarin Crimson Permanent. This happened after I used the Cadmium Red Deep. So it seems like it did leave some stains. Uh, this one also, the Indian Yellow, as they call it. Um, or sorry, not the Indian Yellow, the Cadmium Yellow uh, Deep. This is the Indian Yellow. But anyway, the Cadmium Yellow Deep also left a, a yellow mark there. And funny enough, the Cobalt Blue didn't. So I, I wasn't really sure what to expect because um, up until this point, the most staining paints I ran into were uh, blues. For example, the Thalo Blue, which is highly staining and not the reds and yellows necessarily. So now it's interesting to see something a little different. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is set everything aside and we'll just do a quick demo show, show you what this paint looks like uh, and then also a painting demo. So I want to go through several uh, things here. Uh, we're going to look at what it looks like. Then I want to compare it to Peril in Red and uh, Pyro Scarlet, both by Daniel Smith, um, because I find it helpful to see what a paint looks like when compared to others. So I suspect it's going to be uh, similar to the Pyro Scarlet because it does have a bit of an orange-ish flare uh, and uh, a little different from the Peril in Red that will seem like it has a little more blue in it. Uh, or maybe just more towards the pink or something like this. Uh, then we're going to do some wet and wet, some dry brush, blue and yellow mixes. Okay, so let's get started with just the swatches, taking a look at what this looks like. Okay, so let's start with the Cadmium Red Deep here. Um, so here's what we've got. It's a bit contaminated, but we're going to thoroughly clean it. Um, and it already feels a bit opaque. I don't know, I just, the way... Um, it looks like when it's on the brushes hairs, I can already usually uh, tell for the most part. So let's see what this one looks like. Beautiful. It has a bit of an orange flare to it, as I mentioned. Now I'm using it really uh, thick, straight out of the pan. Not straight out of the tube, but still pretty thick. So this is what we get uh, for this one. 
I didn't get a lot of variance in the in terms of the value, uh, but it gives you a good idea of what it looks like. Uh, next up, I want us to take a look at these two and just see how they compare. So starting with the peril in red, let's take a look at this. And hopefully you can see the difference because I can see it really well. So the Perlin uh, is much more, I guess it's more blue. I guess it has a bit more blue in it. Um, but I can definitely tell the difference here. Uh, we're going to let them mix a bit. I don't really mind that. So that's in terms of the Perlin red. And now let's give it a try with the Pyrrol Scarlet, which I think should be quite similar to this or possibly even more orange. So these two are really similar, and this is why I say the Pyrrol Scarlet is a good um, a good replacement for a Cadmium uh, Red, uh, and it's been a long favorite, long time favorite of mine by Daniel Smith. Uh, I will say that the Pyrrol Scarlet looks even a little more orange, so it kind of makes the Cadmium Red look neutral, um, not not really warm, not really orangey or anything like that. Okay, so uh, this is it in terms of just our quick, quick comparison. But I, what I want to do is just try and play around with the paper uh, to make sure that you can see this uh, well. So if I'm going to hold it up to the light, hopefully you, you get another angle or another view of what it looks like. Okay, so you can see a lot more orange here, a little more neutral here, and a lot more blue here. Okay, so more yellow here. Uh, so it's uh, interesting that this is the way it turned out. So now let's try out some wet in wet. And I'm going to start by just wetting this surface. Probably I'm going to switch to my other silver black velvet brush. Uh, I'm using silver black velvet brushes for this one. These are my favorite ones. This is size 12. The other one was size 8. Um, the paper is the Canson Cotman, uh, Cotman, <laughs> Canson Monval uh, sketchbook. Where did I pull that Cotman from? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Canson Monval sketchbook, uh, which is starting to become a favorite of mine. Uh, so let's start with the wet and wet. I'm pre-wetting the surface now. <clears throat> and you won't be able to see uh, that it's wet, but I'm going to show you in just a moment. I'm usually using a, a little bit too much water for this. Um, for this kind of demo because I'm used to uh, paper that's a little more thirsty, a little more, a little heavier than this sketchbook. But uh, in any case, here you can see the sheen. Um, so I need to tone that down a little bit when uh, working in this kind of a sketchbook. So anyway, I'm going to go back to my smaller brush now. And we're just going to start, going to get rid of this other palette and we will start <coughs> putting the red in there. So now it's a rather wet mixture and it spreads um, because it's wet into wet, meaning this is wet, but also my consistency here is pretty wet. Um, it moves along nicely and now I'm just going to add a bit more red to the mixture and immediately with these kinds of paints I find that it's sometimes hard to produce a mid value so it's very easy to get the very light ones and then immediately it goes to dark so this is also what I noticed now because you just take a small batch of it you add it to the mixture and uh, yeah so this is one thing that uh, these paints are a little harder to control the cadmium reds and all of those highly I don't know, saturated, uh, semi-opaque reds, I noticed, have that thing going. Uh, but anyway, now I'm putting in the darkest, uh, the darkest pigment I can. I'm just, what I'm doing is dipping straight into the paint and just putting it in here. Uh, the thing is, it'll be interesting to see how this dries up because, again, it's all of this area is wet, so it could dry out a little lighter than you see it now, okay? Uh, so now let's do some uh, dry brush strokes. I always leave too small a room for the dry brush uh, because it doesn't seem like the most important thing. But anyway, uh, now you can just see what it looks like. Um, this color can have many uses. Um, I think at the very basic level it's really good for uh, adding details. So for example boats, uh, I want to do a little demo at the end of this and show you how I paint a boat and just do like uh, Patrick Lee Greaves has a great channel uh, Pure Watercolor so you definitely want to check it out and he does a lot of uh, these kinds of reds uh, used in boats. Uh, you can see this in many of his videos. Also Alvaro Castanet and other artists that I follow. 
So anyway, this is it, I think, for the dry brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that wet paint. Uh, now I want us to look at some uh, blue and yellow mixes, as I always do. So I think we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna mix it with the cobalt blue uh, that, that I purchased together with this red. Um, so just starting out here with the red, and I'm gonna let it uh, mix a bit on paper and see what the result looks like. And I always say I don't do enough of these experimentations because I'm super busy with working on the business around my art and so um, and and the, my books and courses and things like this. That when I get to work with with watercolors, I just paint. I don't play around like that. Uh, and so this is really a, a breath of fresh air for me. So now I'm going to take a bit of red and add it slowly to this mixture to get what will be the, the combination of these two. So I'm adding a bit more blue, a bit more red, and the red is immediately dominating the, the mixture as you can see. So I'm gonna add a bit more blue and I'm at the stage where I don't really care to contaminate these paints anymore. I will be a little more careful with the yellows maybe, but I'm like, yeah, I don't really care about these kinds of things. Uh, so anyway, yeah, now you can see it with this. Now I'm gonna try and produce a very dark uh, value here. So let's just pick up a lot of these two and see what we can get. Um, the blue inherently isn't as dark I think. So this is as dark as it can get and it's a beautiful deep uh, violet or purple. Uh, I really like this one. So next up I think I want to try out um, mixing this with maybe a phthalo blue as I always do because it's just a good type of uh, cooler blue I guess. So I'm going to start out again with some red and I'm going to grab some of my phthalo blue. Sorry for um, obstructing some of the view here. And these two will neutralize each other much more significantly uh, because they're more of opposites. So this is where it'll take us. And I'm going to, I'm going to just take out a lot of the paint here and show you what I mean by that. Uh, the phthalo and, and kind of warm uh, reds or cadmiums or the pyro scarlet are always a good mixture. Also, if you want to produce very uh, dark values, so you can see here, you can see a hint of the blue on the right. I'm going to try and up the consistency of the blue. I'm almost actually running out of phthalo blue, so I should probably get some more. Uh, but in any case, this is what you get. So the, the cobalt blue is kind of, uh, I guess it's cooler than, than the French ultramarine, though they are very similar. Uh, but this one does pull it more towards the cool side. Uh, so next up, let's look at some yellows. And this is a good one. So <laughs> this is going to be fun. Um, so I'm going to grab some of the red here once again. Actually, I'm going to just fill this whole area up and then I can just play around with whichever paint I want with it. Um, so, and I'm going to add a bit more. As long as it's wet, you can play around with it, you can add more colors, you can do a lot of things. So, I'm going to start with the uh, Cadmium Yellow Deep, also PWC. And you can see this, just a beautiful mixture. This is really... <laughs> Uh, easy for me to love because I love these kinds of colors. And I'm going to just mix them both on the palette now and we'll see what we can get. So this is the, the orange maybe in between. Maybe if I add a bit more yellow, it'll be more in the middle. So the yellow as well is uh, uh, semi-opaque. So uh, I just wanted to remind you. Uh, and it, it does dominate the, the mixture very easily as well. Uh, so next up, I think it will be good to try out a, kind of a neutral yellow. So maybe like a Hansa yellow, something more lemony. It doesn't really matter the exact one, but you'll see they mix very differently. And this one immediately pushes it to orange because the, the Indian, the cadmium yellow deep is already quite orange. Um, but with this one, you can really get a more of a yellowy uh, mix. So this is, what, this is what you get when you mix them more uh, together. Really beautiful. Um, so let me zoom out a bit so you can see everything. Okay, so this is what we get when we play around with these. Now if I tilt the paper a bit, you can see almost everything is dry now except for this wet and wet patch. Uh, it did dry up uh, significantly dark, okay? Even after the water evaporated, but maybe it turned just ever so slightly uh, lighter. So 
and here you can see the, the better hopefully the comparison of the Peril in Red and Peril Scarlet. Uh, let me hold it up a little to the camera. Uh, and we've got the blues here, and the yellows, some dry brush. So I really hope you enjoyed this one. And next up I'm just gonna do a quick quick painting demo. So here's the final result, a real quick uh, sketch painting took maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, don't worry, I will show the full process uh, in another video, but I just uh, wanted to show you the role that red plays into this. Uh, so hopefully you can see how it behaves and you probably could see how opaque it was when I uh, put it here and it just uh, overpowered the blue that was there uh, a second ago. Uh, so this is it. Uh, I think we've uh, looked really in depth into this one. Let's wrap up this episode. So this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. As you saw, this paint does have some characteristics that may be polarizing, may make some people not prefer not to use it. Uh, I'm in the camp that likes to use it and so I'll probably keep going. Um, I do want to, just because Color transparency isn't a topic that I um, delved deeper, deep into enough, I think. Um, I do want to test uh, this out when compared to other uh, paints that have more or higher transparency. For example, the quinacridone burnt orange that is transparent. Um, I'm just curious to see what it means in terms of mixing. Because what I noticed with yellows, and this is especially uh, scary probably, is that when you use opaque yellows and you mix them and you try to get a, a dark consistency, let's say with blue, uh, you try to get a dark green, it just doesn't work the same way. Because the yellow is opaque, it immediately dominates the mixture and makes it lighter. So it's virtually impossible to get a darker value. Um, so this is just something interesting that I want to play around with in the future. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to remind you, there will be links to purchase the PWC paints, but only in sets. Okay, so if you don't feel like you want the entire set, don't bother with it and maybe get these in a different way, uh, because that's the only thing I could find on Amazon. Uh, I will say that it's very cost effective in sets. It, it, it's it sums up to a very cheap price. I don't know with the shipment, you'll have to check. Uh, but this is it. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. I will put links to my podcast, to my Instagram, um, to my Patreon page if you want to support me there. It really means a lot and it really helps me with my mission. Um, and this is it. I will see you again in another episode of The Paint Show and in another video real soon.